God our Father calls each of us, his sons and daughters, to participate in his work. Will we go to his vineyard? Even if we have said no countless times, we can turn around. With the Father's help, we can turn from disobedience to obedience, from sinfulness to grace. The Father waits patiently and is always welcoming. Welcome, everybody. Let us begin our time of prayer and praise together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, once again, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us be mindful of our continuing need for God's mercy and forgiveness. Your word is truth, sharper than any two-edged sword. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the way that leads to salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You call us away from sin and into new life with you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to Moses, taking some of the spirit that was on Moses. The Lord bestowed it on 70 elders, and the spirit came to rest on them. They prophesied. Now two men, one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets? Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. A reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away, your clothes have become moth-eaten, your gold and silver have corroded, and that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up treasure for the last days. Behold, the wages you withheld from your workers 
who harvested your fields are crying aloud, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Your blessing, Father. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips as you proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father and of the Son. you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to mark glory to you lord at that time john said to jesus teacher we saw someone driving out demons in your name and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us jesus replied do not prevent him there is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me for wh whoever is not against us is for us Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna into the inquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Was Jesus really telling us to cut off our legs or pluck out our eyes? I think that's the image that most people are going to hear from the gospel that he said. But basically he said, there are some important lessons that we need to focus on and we don't focus on them. We focus on other things in life. And Jesus said, that's leading you down the wrong path with God and with others. And when we're led down the wrong path, we sometimes don't realize it because of the motivation for doing what we thought we were doing okay. But we're not examining those kinds of things. A couple uh, incidents for me that taught me some of those lessons that I think are, uh, I, have to be, I have to be aware of my own selfishness. And what I thought about was when I go into a grocery store and I come out from the grocery store, unload the cart, that I've just bought stuff in, and then leave the cart by the car. If I do that, I realize I'm, I just don't want to take it back to the, the cart uh, collector, you know, in, in that. But 
what I'm being doing, what I'm doing is being selfish. I just don't want to take it back. It's not because it's a problem for me, even if I'm older. And I just walked, you know, along the long distance from the front or the from the door of the store to my car, and the the cart collector is always closer than the front door. Always closer than the front door. And that made me realize I'm being selfish. I'm not thinking about the other, the employees that have to come out and take my tart, cart and bring it back to the collector place. Or somebody else that can't park in the, the place next to my car, <coughs> excuse me, because I left my cart there, you know? And there are so many things that drive us to, to selfishness. You know, we're not thinking about how our actions and words affect other people. And that's what Jesus was basically saying. Be concerned about your words, your actions, and how they are affecting other people. And you know, one of the, the lessons that I learned from the Bible is what Jesus said, do what I do, not what I say. You know, do what I do, follow my example in life and a lot of parents will say well we're trying to teach our people our children to do the right thing but we're not doing it ourselves we're not doing it ourselves we're not following the do what i do but do what i say and we can all talk uh, around our faults and our selfishness at different times. But today we're being reminded these are important lessons to always consider that what I'm doing in this world does affect other people. And sometimes if I'm not following the example of Jesus, I am affecting negatively other people in different ways. So today for us, let us pray that we may be exam uh, examples of following what Jesus does, not just what he's saying to us and imp implementing that in our own life because we love our neighbor as ourself. There are still a lot of lessons that we still need to learn from Jesus and learn those lessons that are repeated over and over in our creed. Together, let us reflect on what, would it, what it is that our church is trying to lead us to believe in and to follow. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who proceeds is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us turn to offer our prayers to God for the intentions at this Mass. For Pope Francis and the mission of the Church, may God guide them to build the kingdom on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those appointed to lead our civic communities, may God's presence be with them as they make decisions for the betterment of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who suffer due to violence or poverty, may God bring them peace and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may God's presence be with us in word and sacrament. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who share their blessings with those in need, with their gift to the diocesan annual appeal, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they know salvation in the loving arms of the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. And now for those intentions that are silent in your hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we are grateful that you hear and respond to all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid upon open before us 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, once again we pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy Lord, that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, my roof but only, only say, say the, the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. Since we are unable to receive Christ sacramentally in the Holy Eucharist, let us now pray that he may come spiritually into our hearts and souls at this time. 
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite me wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.